Awesome. Um, so, hey, I'm Divya. My name is Nina. And over the summer, we've been working on a project centered at Who's Going to the Moon. So just a bit of background on this project, we went in with two main goals. The first being to inform the public about ongoing process with lunar exploration. So as of 2022, there were nine lunar missions that launched. Across the coming decade, there'll be over 50. And the primary focus of this project was to create a resource for the average person to come to that would capture and share information from all the current and upcoming lunar efforts around the world, not just from NASA and larger institutions. Our secondary focus was in how this information was displayed. We wanted to ensure that this information was accessible. So to us, this meant ensuring that the heavier concepts were broken down into layperson's terms and that students of all ages would be able to understand the information presented. So this is a bit of an idea of how we had broken down our project. The first phase was ensuring that the team was on the same page about what exactly our goals for the project was. From there, we would then go into the design phase, visualizing what we wanted this project to look like. Following design, we went into both research and development, which occurred concurrently, where we were able to look into the research of future lunar exploration, but also how we were going to showcase our findings in a way that was, again, publicly accessible. Before we started anything in our project, we spent a bit of time trying to figure out the website's layout and our approach on how we wanted our missions database to look like. For context, we worked in a team of interns during this project, worked with a team of interns. Our goal was to make sure that everyone on our team was able to play a role in our final project. So we spent the beginning of the project mostly brainstorming how we wanted the website to look and what features we wanted to add. We looked into websites like NASA Science for inspiration. We put our ideas into a software called Figma. Figma is a collaborative web design tool that allowed us to visually design our website. This is what we ended up designing for our website's homepage. It was a combination of Divya's and I's design with input and suggestions from the rest of our group. The dates in the upcoming mission section over in the left is old, so just ignore that. Additionally, in our Figma, you can see in the top right corner, we have our original website's name, which was LEARN. That stood for Lunar Exploration and Research News. But because LEARN was being used by another organization, we switched to Moon Vectors as our website's name. Our, the idea was that vectors, we wanted to use that as symbolization that our website had more to offer than just keeping track of lunar missions. In addition to website look, we also talked about how we wanted our database to look like. As a group, we agreed to have one database be a search by map and another be a, a search by table, like a table database with different filter options. I was the main lead and creator of the databases. For the table database, I was able to connect the table to an external, external database called Rocket Launch Lab. By doing this, I was hoping that future interns who will run the site don't have to worry about constantly updating the mission catalog. Additionally, I wanted our viewers to have a more interactive database search. Thus, when I started having trouble creating the 2D map database, I looked towards Google Earth. I had it in a way that you would be able to scroll the earth to find a country or organization of interest. You would be able to click on it. Like for example, uh, for the Korean Aerospace Research Institute, you would be able to just click on it. It would open up a panel on the right, brief information about the, about the organization itself. When you click on the link to the current missions, it sends you to a page like this where it would have just kind of brief information about the mission itself and on the bottom links for resources. Awesome. So that brings us to development. So the team that was put together for this project consisted of members from both Blue Marble side as well as some from NASA side. This meant that we have team members of varying backgrounds when it came to programming experience, with the majority having low to no coding experience. So at this point, we had established that we wanted to showcase our findings via a website, but we had to find some sort of middle ground to create it. And so at that point, we had to outsource where we were going to be finding or what tools we'll be using to create our website. Initially, this led us to use Google Sites as it was free, simple, and easy to use. 
However, following our first iteration, we determined that it was a bit too limited for our needs, such as constant updating, which then led us to WordPress, which is the platform that we use now. We had a total of three soft launches and one hard launch, and there will be soon a fourth launch on the 31st with WordPress. And this brings us to our research. So our research was split into six main categories. The process was the first one, which looked into explaining big questions in lunar exploration, asking a lot of the hows and whys behind why we do things the way that we do. The future entailed everything that is to come, including databases of upcoming mission launches and future progress. History took a look into the past and how we use the information we gained then in our current society. We called all the parties involved in lunar exploration the players, that's what that section is. The dangers then touched on all the elements of lunar exploration to be wary of, as with great reward comes great risk. And then finally, we included an education sec section to link to resources that can be used in and out of the classroom. So I was the lead in researching the process, which covers the how and why behind several questions of lunar exploration. As a result, the process was split into three main categories. The research we need to conduct prior to any mission, which is then further broken down into several branches of science. The cost of lunar missions, which touches on the mission costs, as well as the cost of the lunar economy, as well as travel, which talks about how you can get to the moon. As the main intent of this project was to better inform the public on lunar exploration, the majority of this research was put into layperson's terms. And as a result, when explaining what research is to be done, I split it up into three categories with areas getting more specialized the further you go deeper into the site. The cost is probably my favorite part of this project research, but also the most difficult. Uh, the reason being, well, although I was gaining more high level insight into how much money we require for rockets and research and things like that, many companies keep their budgets private. Um, additionally, when looking into lunar economies, many different sources use contradictory numbers, and because it's an entire economy in the making, the numbers drastic, uh, vary drastically. The solution to this variance was just to reflect these results in the site, explaining that although these are estimates, it's difficult to predict the unknown with so many varying factors with research that's constantly evolving. And then lastly, the process touched on travel. This was more to reflect the process of not only how we can currently get to the moon, rockets and transportation, but also again, if you were interested in becoming an astronaut, how you could go about doing so. My research focus was on the future, uh, the future of moon exploration. So I focused mainly on future moon bases and plans to use the moon as a launch pad to Mars. I wanted to spread, spread awareness of other moon plans unrelated to spacecraft. We tend to view space, the space industry in a NASA-like lens, but there are so many other countries active in designing potential habitats, habita habitations on the moon and plans to utilize the moon's resources. As of now, NASA, Russia, China, and universities in Japan have plans to permanently inhabit the moon with moon bases. NASA and ESA have plans to use the moon as a launch pad to Mars once, moon, once humans have established permanent residence on the moon. Okay, sorry about that. These two sections were researched by other interns. The players, the players section was mainly focused on space agencies involved in lunar exploration and the dangers just went over risks going to the moon, including radiation. Awesome. So another team member led the history section, which touched on all the lunar missions that had occurred in, in the past. One of the more interesting parts of this section included applications of information gained from past missions, including applications in medicine, transportation, and computing. The final section of our site focused on education. This was an important one, in my opinion, as interest in space exploration has diminished drastically since Apollo. In fact, a recent study by the LEGO group determined only 11% of students surveyed had shown an active interest in becoming an astronaut, with interest being the lowest in countries such as the US and the UK. So to remedy this, the, this area of our website aims to support teachers in as many ways as we can, providing links to resources for every grade level, but sectioned off by whether they teach at the elementary, middle, or high school level. However, with this being said, there's also a section dedicated to students where they can find interesting lunar information targeted specifically at their grade level, where they can read more about lunar exploration, as well as try some at-home experiments of their own pertaining to space. And so as the site continues to grow, if you have any resources you think would be a great addition, please feel free to share them with us. 
Below is a QR code to an email form. We plan to send an alert on our website's official launch and publication. Please check us out and follow our website's social medias. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitter with the username at NASA Learn. Additionally, on the bottom is our website's name. If you type it, it's going to show with a coming soon page, but bookmark it, keep it there. We're launching 31st. Thank you. Fantastic job to both of you. Um, so one, um, when it does launch, please let us know. We can share it with everyone through Blue Marble Space uh, and through all of our social media. Um, and so a question for you, um, I'm, I'm glad to hear you mention that, you know, there's more than just what NASA is doing in going to the moon. But I also feel like a lot of people in the world right now are just very unaware that people are even planning on going to the moon with Artemis or that China has plans to send people to the moon. Um, what do you think we can do to, to get people interested and excited in following what's, what's happening right now with lunar exploration? That's honestly a really good question. Honestly, I just feel like just generally educating in general, having kind of just sharing the message in like schools, I guess, specifically, because I guess you would start at a young age and get people interested in space and have it just promoted in a sense. Yeah, and can I just add on to what Nina said? I think I think social media plays a big role in that because in that study that I was talking about, the top careers that people were saying that they wanted to be were things like bloggers and YouTubers. Like there were the really exciting ones that get a lot of um, attention on social media. So I think that if we had shown, if we do show space and you know becoming something like an astronaut in that same light, that would have a similar reaction in the general public. Awesome, thank you, I agree. Any other questions? Yeah, Dolly. yeah, I'm just curious why you use the handles NASA Learn and not like EMSIS Learn. I worry that because this is not a NASA sanctioned website, you're gonna get into trouble by using the NASA moniker um, because it's not authorized by the space agency. And um, so keep that in mind and you might have to change the name. Um, also, how are you going to drive traffic to your website? And what is your plan to keep the website updated and fresh after you end your uh, internship? Um, so one of the ways that we were going to drive traffic, well, the first way was that we, for each of our soft launches, we have a list of people who were interested in learning more about the site and um, being notified when the site officially launches. So we're gonna be sending out information to those which people can also sign up for with this QR code over here. Um, but we also plan on driving more using different institutions. So for example, our team is made of, of about eight people. So we're going to be sending the site to each of those institutions that they'll broadcast it out. So we'll have hopefully at least a couple thousand of people that see that we've launched the site. So that will drive traffic to it. Um, and then in terms of maintenance, we do have a team of interns that will be carrying the site on afterwards. So hopefully they take good care of it and then they'll continue from there. <laughs>